Called Dynamite by P.G. Woodhouse. Adapted for radio in six parts by Richard Osborne and starring Richard Bryars as Uncle Fred. With narration by Paul Eddington. Episode 6, The Old School Tie. Lord Ickenham, in his determination to spread sweetness and light, has agreed to be judge at the Bonnie Babies competition at the forthcoming village fete. He's claiming to be Major Brabazon Plank, a headline hero, an explorer just back from the jungles of Brazil. However, enjoying a quiet mug of ale in the bar of the Bull's Head Inn at Ashenden Oakshot, he encounters the real Major Brabazon Plank. The imposter Earl faces his namesake without a tremor. Well, well, I've been calling myself Brabazon Plank and now you pop up the real Brabazon Plank. You owe me two bob. Two bob? Two bob. Are you crazy? It's a point on which opinions differ. Some say yes, I maintain no. Two bob. It is useless for you to pretend that you do not owe me that sum, Bimbo. You took it off me 46 years ago as we were crossing the cricket field one lovely summer evening. Barmy, you said, would you like to lend me two bob? And I said, no, Bimbo, but I suppose I'll have to. Bimbo? Barmy? Cricket field? God, God, you're Barmy Twizzleton. Ah, so I was in those days, but I've come on a lot since then, Bimbo. You see before you Frederick Altamont Cornwallis, 5th Earl of Ickenham and one of the hottest earls who ever donned a coronet. Good Lord! Quite. The boy you knew as a wretched mere on is now a peer of the realm, looked up to like the diggings by one and all. <laughs> Just mention to anyone that you know Lord Ickenham, and they'll fawn on you and stand you lunch. Barmy Twizzleton, well, I'm damned. I wouldn't have recognised you. <laughs> Just what Muggsy Bostock said when we met. You remember him, Muggsy Bostock? Yeah, I'm afraid I do. <laughs> Did you know he lived in these parts? I knew his nephew, Bill Oakshock, lived here. I motored down to see him. He was with me in Brazil. I... You aren't on your way to Ashenden Manor? Yes. Turn round and go back, Bimbo. You must not visit Ashenden Manor. Why not? Because I am already in residence there under your name. It would confuse Muggsy dreadfully if you were confronted with a couple of us. You're staying in Muggsy's house under my name? Yes. Well, to be accurate, I'm staying in Bill Oakshot's house as Bill's guest. Ah. A Muggsy, he tells me, settled into the house unasked with wife and daughter when Bill's father died. And he's got stuck into the woodwork. Typical. Quite. Not at all to Bill's taste. And I am staying there with Bill under the name of Brothers and Plack. So Muggsy thinks you're me? Precisely. <laughs> But why? Why are you staying with Muggsy under my name? It's a long story, Bimbo, and will bring tears of boredom to your eyes. Why not take it for the moment that your old crony wouldn't be doing this without a motive, and that the motive is a good one? Whatever your motive is, I don't like it. So you'd better get back to Muggsy's and start packing. What? When I've had another tankard of this most excellent beer, I'm coming up there to expose you. Expose me? Your old friend. A fellow you used to throw ink darts at, and you still owe me two bob. Listen, I shall start exposing you at four o'clock sharp. That gives you uh, 23 minutes to start. You better look slippy. You're a hard man, Bimbo. But there can be no question of your exposing me. You see, I know your secret. What? What secret? You are a man with an Achilles heel, a fatal chink in your armor. <laughs> Bill Oakshot has told me about it. You suffer from a strongly marked baby phobia. Uh. If anybody points a baby at you, you run like a rabbit. Uh, well... So, if you betray my little secret to Muggsy, you will immediately find yourself plunged into a sea of babies. Babies? Oh, no. Oh, yes. A fate is taking place shortly in this village, and there will be a contest of bonny babies. In my capacity as Major Brabazon and Black, intrepid explorer of Brazilian jungles, I have undertaken to act as judge. Oh, God. Yeah. You begin to see the hideous peril confronting you? Eliminate me, and you automatically take my place. For goodness sake, why? Because, my dear Bimbo, some variety of brothers and plank has got to judge the bonny babies. The posters say so. The village mothers are agog. Uh. And if you imagine that Muggsy, a determined man, will let you slip away, you're living in a fool's paradise. You have no hope, Bimbo, you be foit. No. Why don't they get the curate to do it? I mean, curates are trained for this sort of thing at theological college. It's what curates are for. The curate's got measles. Oh, silly ass. Not a nice thing to say of a man who is lying on a bed of pain with pink spots all over him. Well, my dear Bimbo, it's been delightful running into you again. I wish I could stay and chat, but I must be pushing along. Look me up sometime at Ickenham Hall. It's quite near here. And if you can raise it by then, bring the two bob with you. Oh, well, I can't. Barmy Twistleton. <laughs> He's as balmy as ever. 
Walking back towards the manor, Lord Ickenham found Hermione Bostock sitting in her car, drawn up under a tree in the shade. She had deposited Otis Baines to wait at the inn and was making notes for her next novel. Lord Ickenham recognised her from her photograph. Ah, Miss Bostock, I believe. My name is Brabazon Plank. I am a guest here at your father's house. Bill Oakshot's house, I mean. I am Bill's guest. How do you know who I am? I've had the honour of studying a photograph of you. Oh, yes. The one in the Tatler. No, not that one. The one which your cousin Bill Oakshot carries always next to his heart. I didn't know Bill did that. Well, as you know, I was leader of the expedition up the Amazon of which Bill was so prominent a member. And every time he got a touch of fever... He would pull your photograph out and kiss it, murmuring in a faint voice, I love her, I love her, I love her. What? Very touching, I thought, and so did all the rest of the personnel. It made us feel finer, better men. It's kind of you to tell me this, Major, but I am engaged. Uh, when he marries you, Bill will be getting a prize, and so, my dear, will you. Bill will make you a fine husband, a man who can prop open the jaws of an alligator with a stick and then avoiding his lashing tail, dispatch it with a meat axe, is a man who can be trusted to help sack the cook. Nobody will rejoice more heartily than I when the bells ring out of the little village church and you come tripping down the aisle on Bill's sinewy arm. But, but, uh, I'm not even engaged to Bill. Nonsense. You must be. How about that, I love you, I love you, I love you stuff? I am engaged to someone else. If you're staying at the manor, you will have met him. Well, <laughs> not that pinhead Twistleton. His name is Reginald Twistleton. I'm sorry you consider him a pinhead. My dear girl, it isn't only I that consider him a pinhead. Everybody does. You mustn't dream of marrying Reginald Twistleton. Even if you didn't have Bill Oakshot on your waiting list, it would be madness. How could you be happy with a husband who is always getting arrested for brawling at dog tracks? What? Incessantly, you might say. And giving a false name and address. You're talking nonsense. My dear, these are well-documented facts. If you don't believe me, creep up behind young Twistleton and shout, Yoo-hoo, Edwin Smith of 11 Assertion Road, East Dulwich, in his ear, and watch him jump. That's the false name he gave to the magistrate. What? Of course, Twistleton had been intoxicated on that occasion. In fact, he has since become a dipsomaniac. Hasn't your father told you? But Reginald is a teetotaler. When your eye is on him, perhaps. At other times, he shifts the stuff like a vacuum cleaner. You should have been here last night. He stole down to the whiskey decanter when everybody else was in bed and threw an orgy. Go on. Of course, this Twistleton may simply be off his head. I don't know if you know anything of his family, but he has told me that he is a nephew of Lord Ickenham, a fact surely that makes one purse the lips dubiously. Do you know Lord Ickenham? Only by reputation. And what a reputation. There's a strong body of opinion that holds that he ought to have been certified years ago. I understand that he is always getting offers from Coney Hatch and similar loony bins. And when I first met his nephew, this young man, Twistleton, I myself received the strong impression that he was within a short jump of the bin himself. I shall have a talk with Reginald. I felt an unseen hand pushing me bodily into the aforesaid pond. Whereupon... Hello? Hello? Hello, yes. This is the Hampshire Health Authority here. Who do you say you are? Hold on a minute. Whereupon... No, I... Potter, not now. That's final. Father... Hermione, glad to see you back. I've got someone on the phone. Hello? Hello. Uh, yes, who? The Hampshire Health Authority. Father, do you know where Reginald is? Uh, hold on, please. No, I don't. Why? Hello? Hold on, please. I wish to break our engagement. Hello? Hello. Who is that? It's the Hampshire uh, Health... Uh, what? Hampshire Health Authority. The Hampshire Health Authority? Yes. Oh, so your mother has told you about Reginald, has she? Reginald? You're doing the right thing, my dear. I know. Speak up. Uh, I have to tell you about the fate that you are organising next week at Ashenden <laughs> Oak Shop. Sure, almost. Yes, I... yes. Speak up, please. Thank you, sir. Are we standing No, here not on you, now? Potter. Go away. But I've... Go. Um... You have a Bonnie Baby Show advertised. Yes, yes, yes. For yes. the best and bonniest baby in the village. Under 18 months. Each with his mother, a great attraction. I have to ask you to cancel it and, and to what? announce that it has been cancelled by order of the Hampshire Health Authority. What? What? 
Who are you? Who are you to tell me to cancel anything? Go away, Potter, and get into some dry clothes, Rosie. This is the Hampshire Health Authority. I'm speaking from the council offices in Winchester, sir. Uh, What I am saying will be confirmed by a letter which we have just posted. What? Uh, What? Speak up, damn you. There is measles in Ashenden Oak Shot, and we have to forbid all assemblies of children. Uh Uh-huh. The choir, Uh the scouts, the Uh brown. Yes. The guides, the infants, Bible class, so on, uh, for the next 21 days, unless there are no more cases of measles uh, reported. No. Uh, sh- should I repeat that? No, 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 no. I've got the message. Yes, You're still here, Potter. Uh, yes, sir. I said get out. What? No, not you. The what was it, Hampshire Health Authority? No. I was speaking to a local policeman who seems to have gone swimming with his uniform on. But I'm sure somebody pushed me in, sir. Into what? The pond, sir. No. Sure you dreamed it. No, run along and get into a dry uniform. (laughs) Run along! But I know it was a lady, sir. A lady wearing a red coat, sir. And I saw... Potter, you heard what I said. I saw a lady in a red coat just now in an open window of a room in this house, sir. A room with a balcony. Potter! I snuck round the house and found a ladder and I crape crape, up to the balcony to confront and identify the miscreant. Potter, if you don't get out now, uh, and you're dripping water onto the carpet. Uh, Edwin Smith was there. The lady in Uh, red. uh, Edwin Smith of East Dulwich, sir, oh. and he saw me climbing up onto the balcony and bopped me in the eye as I put my leg over. And it's going to be a shiner, all right. Pushed into a pond by a lady and then bopped in the eye by a gentleman from East Dulwich, sir, masquerading as Mr. Twistleton. And in your own house. Potter! Hello. Hello! If you're not out of my house, <laughs> you. Uh. Yes, the lady in a red coat had been Sally. And the man who bopped Potter in the eye and made him fall off the ladder was Pongo Twistleton. Now PC Potter has gone home at last. Sir Aylmer and his nephew Bill Oakshot are eating cucumber sandwiches, muffins and strawberries in the drawing room. Well, Bill, <clears throat> that lets you off judging the bonny babies. Your friend, brothers on plank too. So I shall find some other way to pay you back for dodging out of that reception at the railway station. I'd have been no good at Bonnie Babies anyway. Well, it wouldn't. Where's the mind at? Can't take her that long to give Trissel to his marching orders. That man's a diplomatic and an imposter. Thank God I shall not have to pass the evening of my life with him as a son-in-law. Uncle Elmer, did I hear you say that Hermione had broken off her engagement to Pongo Twistleton? Mm, that's what I said. Why don't you listen? But Uncle Elmer, that's wonderful news. Now there may be a chance with Hermione for me. What do you mean, chance? What sort of chance? Well, to... to ask her to marry me. <laughs> marry you? Oh, oh God, no. Oh, she told me she, she looks on you as a... Uh, I know, uh, as a brother. No, 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 not a brother. A sheep. Sheep? A poor, spineless sheep who can't say boo to a goose. She told me so herself. Hello, Bill. Hello. Uh, where did you come from? Uh, Uncle Aylmer, uh, this is Major Brabazon Plank. Who the hell are you? Well, who the hell are you? I'm looking for Muggsy Bostock. I am Sir Aylmer Bostock. Oh, don't be an ass. Muggsy Bostock is younger than me, and you look like a good 150. <coughs> Have you seen your Uncle Muggsy anywhere, Bill? This is my uncle. Really? It's that ghastly white moustache that fooled me. <coughs> well, nice to see you again, Muggsy, and all that. But I came here on business. Plank's my name. Your Plank? Brabazon Plank. You may remember me at school. I've just discovered that that raiding lunatic, Barmy Twistleton, Lord Ickerman, he calls himself now, God knows why, has been passing himself off as me under your roof, and it's got to stop. What? I see. So, Bill, you thought that imposter would let you off the bonny babies. Very sensible of you, Bill, to get out of it. Now, the bonny babies judging. Barmy told me about it. Dangerous things, Bonnie Baby's contests. Yes. I can show you a wound in my calf. Here, look. In Peru, it was. A disappointed mother in a bowler hat got after me with a dagger when I didn't give her repulsive child first prize. I'll never judge Bonnie Babies again. Well, you'll be glad to know that the Bonnie Babies contest scheduled for the Ashington Oakshot fate has been cancelled. Thank God. Mm. 
It's danger of measles if children congregate. Shut up, William. What? By the way, Plank, you may be interested to know that it was this nephew of mine, William, who sneaked balmy Twistleton into my house under your name. Now, look. What do you mean by introducing imposters into my house, eh? You infernal young scallywag. That's enough, Uncle Aylmer. After 15 years, that's enough. Huh? My house, you say? Of all the crust. It's about time, Uncle Aylmer, that we got this thing cleared up about who this ruddy house belongs to. Yes, let's. Whose house is it? You keep out of this. The house is mine. What? Then where does Muggsy come in? He planted himself here and hasn't budged. My father died when I was 16, a mere kid, and this uncle of mine barged over from Cheltenham and got into the woodwork. This is preposterous. So why didn't you boot him out? I hadn't the heart, but I have now, by God. I've had enough of this being a... Uh, what's the word? Fathead? Cipher in the house? You can jolly well clear out, Uncle Aylmer. Uh, you understand me? Buzz off and take your collection of curios with you. Uh, Back to Cheltenham or Bexhill. Or Bognor Regis. Uh, yes, or Bognor Regis. Anywhere you like. But you're not going to stay on here. Have I made myself clear? But William. Right. I'm going out to cool off. Oh, yes. And, of course, we will be glad to see Aunt Emily any time she likes to visit. And by we, I mean your daughter, Hermione and me. She's going to marry me. I haven't told her yet. That's what's going to happen. Ah, nice chap, young Bill. Mm. I say extraordinarily good muffins, these mugsy. I'll have another. Strawberry's very good, too. Um. Bill strode out beyond the terrace to where the drive curved towards the gate. His adrenaline was pumping. He felt fine. He tasted blood and wanted more. He was in the frame of mind when he would have liked to meet Joe Lewis and pick a quarrel with him. Then he saw in front of him on the drive Sally Baines' brother, Otis Baines, the publisher. Hermione had just told him that her father would call off the lawsuit, and he had suddenly folded her into his arms and started to kiss her. I say! Who's this? Well, uh, that's enough of that. Oh, oh. oh back the oh, Don't kill him, Bill. He's my publisher. Oh. He's doing my next three books and giving me 20%, rising to 25 over 3,000. Oh. oh, well, um, pick up your spectacles and stand aside. Oh. I shall be busy. Why, Bill? Hermione, I'm sorry. I've been too hasty. But I didn't like seeing this publisher embracing the girl, um... Yes, Bill? The girl, uh... Oh, dash it, Hermione. Surely you've known that I've loved you for years. But I... But I mean too much of a sheep. Sheep? Yes, damn it, a sheep, to tell you. Well, that's all finished with. <gasps> Hermione? Oh. You will marry me, won't you, Hermione? <sighs> Darling Hermione? Oh, yes, Bill. Darling Bill. That's clearly understood, is it? Yes, Bill. No more fooling about with these pongos and whatnot? No, Bill. <sighs> right. Now you. So, you're going to publish her books, are you? Yes, yes, all of them. Uh, as soon as possible. Giving her 20% rising to 25 above 3,000? Oh, yes. Why not a straight 25? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I was going to suggest it. 20% is enough for the next three. After that, I'll look around for better offers. I am... Uh, Fine. Well, come along in, both of you, and have some tea. Oh, I can't, darling. I must be getting back to London. Mother's been waiting for me in the flat since one o'clock. Oh, London, yes. Oh, can I give you a lift back, Mr. Bain? Well, I... Hop in, then. Goodbye, darling Bill. Tomorrow. Fine. Ah, uh -huh. Uncle Fred. Hello. My dear chap, congratulations. I got word from your Hermione. She was hurrying back to London with a chap with side whiskers. Ah, that was Otis Baines. Sally's brother? Awful chap. I didn't recognise him. He's a publisher now. She got her father to call off that lawsuit. Excellent. Well, I was saying, Hermione gave me the good news of your engagement. So the Ickenham method worked, did it? You clasped her to your bosom? Of course I did. She seemed to like it. And showered kisses on her upturned face? Yes. And she liked that too. Timid devotion gets you nowhere. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you don't have a piece of raw steak on you, do you? No, why? Well, Pongo's been throwing his weight about. Elsie Bean is looking for steak for Harold Potter's eye. He caught it bopped. Really? 
<laughs> by Pongo. Yes. And what with a bop from Pongo and his earlier immersion in the duck pond from Sally, Potter has seen the light and is handing in his papers now to leave the police, buy that pub and marry Elsie. She seemed very happy about it. Splendid. Yeah. Things are turning out rather well, aren't they? I'm on my way to the manor. Well, I'll see you later. Oh, oh by the way, Uncle Fred, you know the real Brabazon Plank has turned up? The uh, chap who led that expedition I went on to Brazil? He's with my uncle now. Uh, I, I met him at the inn. We had a very interesting chat. But the intrepid explorer, Major Brabazon Plank, had left Sir Aylmer's drawing room and was in the hall. Lord Eckenham changed course and went to the collection room. He'd not expected to see Sir Aylmer there, nor Sir Aylmer to see him. But there they met. Oh, so it's you, is it? The imposter. Ah, oh, Muggsy, I understand you've met old Bimbo Plank. How do you think he looked? We thought you'd aged. Where's Sally? Who? Oh? Bimbo told me she and my nephew Ponga were in here with you. You know that girl? She's my honorary niece. Oh, is she? Then it may interest you to know that I, as chairman of the magistrates round here, have just given her 30 days without the option. And your nephew the same. What on earth for? Bed set on Potter, the policeman. He's in the scullery, having his eye attended to. They will take those two off to the lockup. A harsh sentence? The only possible sentence. One of the most disgraceful cases that have ever come before me. She pushed Potter into the duck pond. Well, what does a policeman expect if he deliberately goes and stands on the edge of duck ponds? Girls will be girls. Not while I'm sitting on the bench, they won't. But how about the quality of mercy, Maxie? It isn't strange, you know. It droppeth as a gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. Damn the quality of mercy. You better not let Shakespeare hear you say that. Damn Shakespeare. And now we'll discuss this matter of your coming here under a false name. Yes, I was hoping you'd be able to spare a minute for me to tell you about that. But before I begin, I would like to have a witness present. What? Huh? Bimbo? Ah! Oh, hello, Bimbo. Having another go at the strawberries in the drawing room, are you? Oh, what a lamb. Uh, wise chap. Listen, I need you as a witness. I am going to tell Muggsy a story that will shock you both. It isn't the one about the young man from Calcutta, is it? Because I've heard it. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I meant that the tale will revolt your moral sense rather than bring the blush of shame to the cheek of modesty. Shall I begin at the beginning? Sounds a good idea. Farewell. There was an American girl called Vansittart who came to London and bought a number of trinkets in Bond Street, her plan being to take them back to America and wear them. All straight so far. Quite. What has this Muggsy, got to do Muggsy, with it? Muggsy, Muggsy, if you interrupt, I'll put you over that chair and give you six of the juiciest. <laughs> I've no doubt Bimbo will be glad to hold you down. Charmed. Quite like old times. Bah. Good. Then I will resume. Where were we? Uh, the American wench bought jewellery in Bond Street. Yes. And her friend, Sally Baines, the sculptress, a sort of goddaughter of mine, incidentally, Sally had the pippin of an idea for La Bansitart to get her jewellery back into America without bothering the New York customers. Mm, girls are always better smugglers than men, you'll find. Quite. Sally sculpted a clay bust and tucked the jewellery in a bag in the head of the bust. And when it was hardened, brought the bust to me at Ickenham to give to Miss Vansittart on her way down to Southampton to her boat. I like the sound of this, Sally. Got brains. Go on. Yes, but not enough brains. She couldn't keep it under her hat, silly girl. She was doing a bust of Muggsy here at the time, and to keep him awake as he sat for her, she told him what she was going to do to help her friend Alice. What on earth are you saying? Oh, shut up, Muggsy. Bow. You say, Barmy, that Sally told Muggsy about it while the bust was still waiting at Ickenham? Exactly. And this is what you're not going to believe, Bimbo. Muggsy came over to Ickenham on Visitor's Day, paid his half-crown for the tour of my ancestral pile, I always go to ground on Visitor's Day, oh, of course. and went off with the bust under his overcoat. What? I do say, uh, this is uh, preposterous, I mean, uh, preposterous. Hi, uh, that for an ex-governor, an old boy of a famous public school, our school, Bimbo. Yes. Cloisters, chapel, fives courts, everything. Mm. Four years of it, and Muggsy in our house, too. Disgusting. Graceful. But it's a string of lies from beginning to end. Honestly, Muggsy, I wouldn't bother to persist in this pretense of innocence. It would be manlier if you came clean and threw yourself on the mercy of the court. Much manlier. Whiter altogether. Uh. Right. I told you I could prove my accusation, and I will now proceed to do so. You have a nice large foot, Bimbo. Uh. Oblige me by stepping over to that cupboard and kicking in the door. Right, sir. Stand back. Oh, good. What on earth do you think you're look, doing? Look inside, Bimbo. You see a clay bust, Bimbo? That's right. Bust. Clay. One. In a string bag. Bring it here. How the devil did it get there? Really, Muggsy. <laughs> good that, eh, Bimbo? Very good. Break the thing's head. Bust the bust. Right here. Oh. There. 
a chamois leather bag, and one bag spinning jewels onto table. There. Good God, Isabel. This must have been one of your best hauls, Muggsy, you old villain. Oh, well, uh, you were asking just now, Muggsy, why I had come here under a false name. I certainly was. It was because I hoped I could settle this business without a scandal. Knowing that you were shortly to stand for Parliament, Muggsy, and that a scandal would ruin your prospects, I took a charitable view that you had yielded to a sudden temptation. As far as I'm concerned, I'm now willing to let the thing drop. Uh, we all understand these irresistible temptations, uh, eh, Bimbo? Absolutely. Then the whole wretched affair can now be forgotten. Uh, of course, the monstrous sentence you have as chairman of magistrates just inflicted on my nephew Reginald and Sally Baines must be quashed. You agree to that, Muzzy? What? Do you agree to what I've been saying? Yes, yes, certainly. I should jolly well think so. Thirty days without the option for what was a mere girlish, or in Pongo's case, boyish, escapade... It recalls the worst excesses of the Star Chamber. The trouble with you fellows who have been governors of Crown Colonies is that you get so accustomed to dishing out orders that you lose all restraint. But I don't understand. That's settled, then. Bimbo, let's go immediately and tell Constable Potter to strike the jives from the young couple's wrist. Oh. You really must turn over a new leaf, Muggsy. It'll only need a little willpower. Don't you agree, Bimbo? Oh, yes. How did the poet Tennyson put it? I hold it truth with him who sings to one clear harp in divers tones that men may rise on stepping stones of their dead selves to higher things. Precisely. You can't beat Tennyson. Well, bye, Barney. Bye, Muggsy. No. I'll step along to the drawing room again. I think there were several strawberries left over. Well, Muggsy, it's been good running into you again. I shall watch your parliamentary career with interest. If you'd like me to come and speak at any of your rallies, just give me a ring. You'll find if you want to cause a real stir, it's hard to beat a first-class earl with all the trimmings. <laughs> Uncle Dynamite starred Richard Bryars as Uncle Fred, with Simon Treves as Bill Oakshot, Charles Gray as Sir Elmer, and Mary Chater as Hermione Bostock. Chris Emmett was Policeman Potter, Toby Longworth, Otis Baines, and Donald Hewlett, Major Brabazon Plank. The narrator was Paul Eddington. Uncle Dynamite was written by P.G. Woodhouse and adapted for radio by Richard Osborne. The producer was Gareth Edwards. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.